2024 Crescendo. Crescendo. Robot in three days, Team 1.0. I'm Barry. I'm Gabriel. Let's talk about this new game, Crescendo. Starting off with ranking points. Just like last year, ranking points are gonna be extremely important. It's how the teams are ranked going into the playoffs. Every team can get up to four ranking points every match, and only half of those are from winning the match. Cooperation matters more than match score. So it's gonna be important to talk to your alliance partners as well as your opponents for every match. This year, if you wanna make a crazy autonomous mode, go for it because you have an A stop button. So if the entire thing runs amok, you can stop your robot, but then you'll still be able to play during the tail out period. And with the expansion rule on your robot perimeter, you can only extend one foot horizontally, forward, back, left, and right. So keep that in mind with your design. With this year, you wanna keep two things in mind with your robot design. Drive chain, as well as the ability to traverse underneath the chain might provide more avenues to be able to travel through different parts of the field, being able to go under the chain, versus with the kit bot, you have your left and right corridor around the stage. Be sure to read all the rules around the protected zones. You don't want to contact a robot because penalty is a whopping five points. With that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about the intakes for this year's game. Notes are going to be introduced from the source, and keep in mind that no horizontal movement will be distributed from the three positions by the human player. Your kid bot is only able to grab them from a fixed angle. So consider the advantages of that versus one that's able to pivot. Let's take a look at team 1986 Team Titanium from 2013. They have a spatula design in which their intake can be used for both off the floor as well as from a feeder station. An added bonus to the spatula design is seen here with Team 330 Beach Bots from 2016 where they were able to self-correct their robot from a top of position back onto the wheels shown here from Einstein at World Championships. Let's talk about the amp opening. This is designed to be the easiest way to score points in Crescendo. Uh, we talked about a little bit earlier about if you make a small robot that can go underneath the core and the chain that it'd be easy to drive around the field. Well with the amp you only have to clear a two foot two inch clearance in order to get to the bottom of the amp. A low robot that scores in there will be a very useful robot for, uh, for this game. With a robot's maximum height of four feet, it's gonna take some sort of shooter to propel notes into the speaker. So let's take a look from 2013's Team RI3D 1.0's two wheel shooter. Its simple design can be implemented with this year's kit bot. Alongside with a linear actuator with a spring to shoot, that proof of concept can be shown with FTC Team's 16,073 Cyberhawks from 2021, along with FRC Team 1503 Spartonics in 2013. The trap flap is the next way to try to score in Crescendo. The trap flap is four feet, eight and a half inches off the ground and it is going to require a completely different mechanism to be able to score in it than before. You're not gonna be able to shoot into it because it requires pushing the note into the trap and the flap could get stuck as you drop it in. It has to be completely into the trap uh, for it to be scored. So that requires lifting up and being able to push in and drop the note down into the trap. That means you have to be suspended from the chain in order to lift up that high and actuate. One of the robots to take a look at, 1690 from 2019, had an excellent arm that lifted up as well as pushed outward. Or you can have a telescoping arm with an actuating wrist. Take a look at Team 27, also from 2019. As far as getting a robot on a chain, in 2013, Team RA3D 1.0 has a lifter which has just enough travel to get itself off the floor. In 2020, RA3D Sherbrooke has the ability to travel laterally while in the air. That just about wraps it up from the Robot in Three Days 1.0 team. Here's a few final thoughts. Have a schedule. After you complete the prototyping phase, give your programmers time to troubleshoot. And of course, your drivers time to practice their driving. You wanna make sure that whatever direction your team does to go through with it and finalize it. You wanna spend all your resources and energy into that objective. And remember, Use your resources accordingly, and that includes the time available to you all. One other thing, the kit bot that you have, 
build it. Use it as a platform, like Barry said, for programming, for troubleshooting, for prototyping, and just seeing the sizing of what space you have available on your robot. You can also learn a thing or two during that process. And not every single team has to do everything on the field. Pick one thing that your team wants to do best and fine tune it. And last but not least, remember, don't be afraid to fail fast and often. It gives you an opportunity to learn from those mistakes and build a better robot. Best of luck to all the teams. We hope you hit all the high notes. Flapjack. Did you actually hit start already? Oh, oh absolutely. Um. <laughs> <laughs>